Tiger Lily Squad gang gang, what's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? Dude, dude, dude. <laughs> Every time, get down. Get down. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? Was. Hey, what's poppin'? What's poppin'? Was. Hey, hey, what's poppin'? Tiger Lily Squad gang gang, how you living? How you breathing? How you feeling? It is your girl, Essence of Shay. And from time to time, you're going to see Bo popping in and out. I mean, what's what's good? What episode is this? This is episode three. We got our mic. Is this thing on? Is this thing recording? I hope it is. Hope it is. Um, But thank you so much. I just came from work, y'all, and I wanted to record this podcast because I didn't put one up last week. Well, did I put one up last week? I did put up one last week. So I'm kind of on track, but I'm just recording late. Any who's a bees. Um, yeah, I just want to thank y'all for the podcast before. Um, I, I, I appreciate the encouragement and the words of how you guys rock with me like hard body like for real um and this podcast is about growth self-improvement and in order to do that you know what i'm saying you gotta you gotta get down to the nitty-gritty of the whole situation so uh you know first things first i don't have a title until i start talking but we're gonna go into our journal and i ahead of time read what i was going well, I read what I'm now going to read to you guys. And this was on January 11th, 2023. Uh, Dear God, I have these thoughts that keep popping in my head. Thoughts of not being good enough. Thoughts of not being successful. I sometimes feel that I am wrong with what life I am dreaming about. I often wonder my reason of success and happiness and happiness attainable. Yesterday during praise and worship, they talked about God loving us no matter what. I genuinely felt that and I had to write down my feelings as well. I really just want God to love and forgive me. I always think I'm being punished or put in situations that I fail. But honestly, I do have to take my own responsibility. God, I ask that you renew my heart, renew my heart posture, renew my thoughts, actions, speech, and my work ethic, my hustle, my walk. Renew me. Transfer my mind. Um... As I think about this, right, and as I read it again, I'm getting over, um, if that was loud, I'm so sorry, I'm getting over a cold, Um, I was sick for about a week, so now it's just like the mucus is coming up, but um, as I think about this, right, I think about, um, I told you guys in the last podcast that I was reading the Bible. And um, I started reading, what is it? I'm still still new with the chapter, so give me a second. It was about Joseph, the story of Joseph, um, and how Genesis, Genesis 35, and it says 250, but I'm only on 46. I'm still reading it, so I don't fully know how it ends. But it's just basically about how Joseph, um, his brothers tried to kill him and then they sold him to become a slave. And then he got sold to this officer and this officer's wife was trying to like have sex with him. And Joseph was like, nah, sis, like I'm not about that life. And um, she kept pursuing him. And then one day, like, um, she walked up on him and he like pushed her away and she like grabbed his garment and he ran off and she, Shorty lied. Yo, the Bible is savage, bro. Shorty lied and said that how he, he raped, well, he graped her because we're on YouTube. He graped her. Um, 
and then the officer arrested him. Then he went in jail, and then these dudes that the pharaoh uh, used to work for the pharaoh basically banished them and put them in jail, punished them, put them in jail. These dudes had dreams. One of the dudes' dream was good that the pharaoh was going to hire him back, and the other dude was it was bad that the pharaoh. Um, synopsis, you know, like um, and the dude was impaled by something. The pharaoh like killed him, and um, Joseph told the guy like, "Yo, when the the dude that something that he's going to be rehired, like, listen, you're going to be rehired." Because you're going to be, look, yo, I look rough, but it is what it is. The message still needs to get clear. So hopefully how I look is not too bad for y'all. Like I said, I just came from work and I just been chilling. And I had this message on my heart that I just wanted to talk to y'all about, right? But either way, Joseph was like, when you get hired, tell him. He basically told the guys what, how they, what their dream was what it actually means because God told Joseph and he told them, he told the guy who was going to get hired back from Pharaoh, uh, when you do get hired back, remember me, tell the Pharaoh so I could get out of jail because I'm in jail for something that I didn't commit. Well, the guy gets hired back and the other guy dies and the guy just forgets about Joseph. Later on, the Pharaoh had dreams again and, um, uh, essentially he was going to his magicians and everybody like that and kind of like asking them like yo what what does these dreams mean and nobody could remember Bo, get down get down what does these dreams mean and nobody could tell him so the dude remember like oh snap i did something salty like i was supposed to help this dude like he told me about my dream and what it meant and it actually happened Pharaoh brought him up. Long story short, he told him, like, is your dreams mean like there's gonna be seven days of like seven years of like enrichment, uh, prosperity, everything throughout your land, and then seven years of famish, like nothing is growing, people are gonna grow hungry, da 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 da. So he basically told him, yo, you need to hire somebody to like cover your land, who knows what they're doing. Pharaoh hired him. Pharaoh hired Joseph. Cool. <clears throat> Skipping all of it, his brothers, his dad, um, the seven years of prosperity and everything passed by. He Joseph got married, blase bloop. The seven years of famish is starting, and Joseph is dad, Joseph's dad sends his brothers to go to the dude who is selling the grains, not knowing that it's Joseph. So Joseph brothers came in and Joseph knew who these guys were, but they didn't recognize him at all, which in my head, I'm like, yo, how you didn't recognize your brother, fam? Like, that's crazy. So, um, long story short, back and forth, da, 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 Joseph basically essentially forgave his brothers and told them who he was wimping and crying, you know what I'm saying? Then he goes back. He says, "Go back to our dad and tell him that I'm alive and bring him back." And he and y'all can basically stay with me because we two years have passed. We still have five more years of this, and I have all the food and da 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 to to take care of y'all. That is where I ended up, right? I don't, but like I said, I don't know how it ends. Um, I'm gonna read the rest when I get off this pod. But what got me and had me thinking is like forgiveness, like what what is it like what is the definition of forgiveness because i don't know anyone who would who siblings or fam, bro move who siblings or family would sell, sell them to become a slave who somebody would lie on them that said they raped them and they didn't then they had to go to jail Send, spend so many years in jail for a crime that they didn't commit, that they didn't commit. And then on top of it, get your brothers come back to you um, 
They don't know who you are. You make them grovel a little bit, but ultimately, like you forget. I don't know anybody who honestly will forgive their family for that to the point where they're like helping them now. Probably your dad because your dad ain't do nothing, and whoever came after those siblings who betrayed you, yeah. But the actual siblings who uh, betrayed you. That's like a hard pill to swallow to forgiveness. I thought I knew what forgiveness meant, but reading that story made me realize like I genuinely don't know if I am that forgiving. Like I'm a forgiving person. And when I say that is like I give people so much chances and opportunities to the point where I turn into somebody that I am not and good or bad which was sometimes have actions that could get me in trouble because I just held on to that individual. If you guys hear chomping in the background, I'm so sorry, is my dog. He wasn't doing none of this until I started to record. Uh, But Oxford language definition of forgiveness is the action or process of forgiving or being forgiving. What is a true meaning of forgiveness? Forgiveness means different things to different people, but in general, but in general, it involves an intentional decision to let go of resentment and anger. So remember I told you guys um, that I'm going to come to you each episode and just give you a story of my life. And hopefully we can break down healing and for not only me, but for you, maybe you don't grasp my story and that never happened to you, but uh, you can understand where I'm coming from. The first thing about that is, um, the first thing about that with healing, it really comes from a lot of it starts from your inner child and I should have pulled up all of this stuff. But like I said, this is just something I was thinking about while I was driving home and inner child is the childlike usually hidden part of a person's personality that is characterized by playfulness, spontaneity, and creativity usually accompanied by anger, hurt, and fear attributable to childhood experiences. So a lot of times in the healing process or a lot of times in how decisions are made in our lives is from inner, from childhood experiences. And a lot of us who go through trauma, our inner child is damaged crushed not she's not good at all so for me right let's my inner child i know that uh seven year no 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 that seven year old shana stay sit that seven year old shana is not she's hurt she's crushed she has some things that she needs to work through. So let's work through them, right? Um, Seven-year-old, moving from, born and raised in Brooklyn, living in a family house, Jamaican family house, in the basement part of it, three a brownstone home, in the basement part with her mom, her stepfather, whom she adored and who adored her. This is key. Remember that? and her little brother. Stepfather decided he wanted to move back to St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, um, because that's where he's uh, been living majority of his life, and he wants to move back. Mom decides, well, you know, Let's try it out. Let's try something new. Let's do it. Family decides to pick up. They move to the Virgin Islands. But (laughs) mom is not 
appreciative of her one kid. She turns around and she has a second one. And then upon arrival, I don't know if the child, I mean, I was oblivious to this, but I ain't realized my mom was pregnant again. So she was now pregnant with her third child. And while we moved to St. Croix, she decides, well, I don't want to have my child here because I don't know this place. I'm new to it. I'd rather have my child where my other kids are born and I know the hospital's there. So she goes back to New York. Once we're settled in, me, my stepdad, and my bro- my my little brother, we are settling into St. Croix. We get into school and, and, and everything. And she goes back to New York to have my second brother <clears throat> from my stepdad. And um, while she was gone, um, something in my stepfather kind of like switched. Um, and he just got really like abusive towards me. Um, if I got bees, I will get beat. Um, he would throw me against the wall. Um, I was just like, it, it like, I became really, I'm always like the lovable kid. And I always would run up and give my parents hugs and kisses. And I'm always laughing and giggling with people. And for me, I just didn't understand, like, one, where was my mom? And two, why why when we moved here, all of a sudden, something switched in my stepdad. Like, in New York from what people told me because I don't know, I'm going to tell you why I can't re- why I think I can't remember a lot during I mean before we moved cuz I could remember St. Croix up but before St. Croix I can't really remember anything and it's more and so people have to remind me of stuff and people told me like yo he loved you and he spoiled you to death you was his little princess it was never a problem like da 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 I remember I do remember when they got married and they were dancing. He like got me and put me on his feet in between them. And I was dancing with, with them. And it was just like, you know, so to go from that to like getting abused and I didn't not, not sexually. I I don't remember anything like that, but physically and mentally abusive. Like if you tell your mom, like, you're not going to get no food. You're not going to get this. If you tell your mom I'm, I'm hitting you and da, 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 it was like little threats. And, um, I, sorry, y'all. Um, I would, I would lay, I, I, I just got threatened a lot. I would go to school and that was like my safe space. I would play around with the kids. I was always the life of the party. Like people always wanted to play with me. Um, I came alive when I was around other people, but that's when I really started to like cater to the demands of others so I could have friends instead of people hating me because at home I didn't understand why a man that I loved and I thought loved me and was like a father figure to me that I call dad um, would just turn on me for, for like no reason, right? So um, I remember my mom coming back with my my second little brother, who I am was from the from the time I saw her was completely in love with, which is kind of crazy because the brother right after me it took me a while. Now I'm obsessed with all my siblings, but like it took me a while. I'm like, ugh, yuck. But then when my second brother came, that was my little baby, like for real. Like I loved him so much. And then through loving him got me attached to my other one too. So like then we became the three amigos, but that was later down the line. But when my mom came back, I remember her telling me like she could tell something was wrong with me because normally I would run up to her and like give her hugs. And um, 
she came back and she she would give me a hug and I would jump like I would I was like and like she would ask me like what's wrong and I just would tell her nothing and then finally I told her what was going on and um I remember I remember us there is a being a two bedroom home um my parents or my my mom and my brother's my brother's dad was in one room and me and my brothers were in another room uh it was bunk beds i was on the top my little brother was on the bottom and then there was like the crib well, i think the crib was probably in their room and i remember one night my mom came in to our room and I don't think she knows I remember this, but she came up and she laid on the top bunk with me. And like my stepfather at the time came in and like tr- kind of tried to drag her out of the bed. And it was like a whole thing. And I I don't remember everything. One thing I can say, I'm, I don't remember him ever putting his hands on my mom. That would be her kind of story to tell if that happened because I honestly don't remember that but I do remember her telling me she told him if you ever put your hands on Shayna again I like I would and um and I will go and I would yeah so he took what she said seriously but then he started to treat me different like he would take my brothers out to eat he wouldn't take me um he wouldn't bring me nothing to eat he wouldn't buy me nothing anymore um um it it was just, it was a lot it was a lot and for my mom to not know anybody on St. Croix and now she has three kids um she didn't leave right away but eventually she did leave and that was a struggle kind of in itself um and that just started something in my mind as far as like once I start started to grow up I remember just like doing things to kind of like embarrass my mom like I would be on a track team and I would lie just so I don't have to run and I'll be like oh she's pregnant she's about to have her baby I don't even think my mom was pregnant at the time or I just make up stuff, um, just be, and I, and I just be lying for no reason. I used to take money out of her bag. I used to steal her car and drive it to the school. And as I got older and like got into therapy heavy, I realized that I subconsciously was punishing my mom because I felt like she left me and she left me in a whole, and I already had this conversation with my mom, but she left me and she put me in a home with a guy who damaged me deeper than anybody could have thought of. And, um, and as far as my memory goes, I have a dent right here in my head. You can't really see it. Like you have to come close or like you can, when you touch my hand, my forehead and just put your hand down you could feel the the dent in my brain or my skull and that's because one day he threw me like a, they used to call me string bean because I was super skinny until probably like junior year of college or a sophomore year of college and he threw me against the thing and I hit my head on the side of the wall the corner of the wall and um that happened and this was before my oh I said I wasn't going to cry, so I'm not going to do it. Um, This was before my mom came back. And so I think that did something. And then uh, then we went to a a trip in Antigua before we moved to St. Croix, me and my little brother. And we stayed with uh, my stepdad at the time, side of the family. And my mom feels like they did something to us because, like, with between that and me getting uh, thrown into the wall, I can't remember anything 
before we moved to St. Croix. Everything, once we moved to St. Croix and up to recent, I can remember vividly. But everything before then, and it's not like I was a baby like three years old. Like, oh, okay. she Like, I was whole seven, turning eight, and I don't remember nothing. Um, but either way, I say, I th- th- think about forgiveness and, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm sorry. It took me a while to forgive my mom. And, and the reason why it took me a while is because I didn't think I blamed her at all. And I've even told my mom, like, I don't blame you at all for any of that. But subconsciously, my inner child, like that seven-year-old, blamed her because it was like, well, why? Why did, you, why did you leave me? Like, what was the reason? I, like, help me understand what was the reason of you leaving me, you know? Either way, um, so yeah, I, I, that's, but I've had several counseling sessions and I talked to my mom about that stuff. So my mom, it was easy for me to forgive her, especially when I learned later on in life, like how she struggled and we had no idea that she struggled. She gave us whatever we wanted. We had no idea. So my mom is my, 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 um, idol. Um, I, I look up to that lady so much. So I feel like after I realized why I did a lot of the things I did growing up, I had to take some inventory and also have a serious conversation with her. And I was able to forgive her. As far as my first stepfather goes, this is where I think the conversation is coming from in this podcast. Um, and it's going to be about forgiveness, clearly. I have not forgiven that man at all. <laughs> at all. Even when I see him as an adult, it still gives me shivers to the... And not because of I'm scared. It's furiousness like it's anxiety to the because because I want to put my hands on him like and I know that's wrong to say but when reading the story of Joseph I immediately thought about oh yep I know what this podcast is going to be about I know what I'm going to talk about I know the first thing that I'm going to talk about as far as my inner child goes and it correlates with forgiveness as well because that whole trajectory or chapter of my life shaped not only (laughs) my adolescent but my young adulthood all the way up to my adulthood till now that and a lot of people probably are like you should let that go that was a that's easier said than done, especially when it messes you up mentally. That's a hard thing. Physically, I think you can heal physically quicker than mentally and emotional abuse. Um, I, for the sake of my brothers who I love so much, I don't talk ill about him to them. Um, I really don't even talk about him low key at all. When I did, I would talk to my mom about it, but I don't talk to my brothers about their dad because I just think that's disrespectful to talk down about their father. They have their own thoughts and opinions about him because they know everything that's happened. We've all had conversations as adults. But I go back to the Joseph story because I'm like, I don't know if I'll ever get to a point where I could ever forgive this person and then it makes me feel like am I walking in the right path is God going to bless me because I can't fathom in my head at this age (laughs) 30 what 30 what 31 years ago no 31 
Can I count? Over 30 years ago, I still cannot. Yo, I still can't forget this dude. Like, he could kick rocks with Jesus shoes on and bust his toe. Like, for real. Like, that's wrong to say. And even me saying that, that's like true. That's true. And I have to work through that because what do they say? Forgiveness is not for them, it's for you. So you can heal fully and move on. You're not forgiven to just be this good crusader and this happy person. And so you can live a bit. It's so you can live a better life internally. So how you present yourself to the world is like a true indication of who you are because you're able to let that part of you go. So like you could trust people and not have all these men issues and these father issues and stuff. I'm smiling because it's like, it's fact. Like I'm telling myself out loud what I need to do, but it's very hard. Y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying? Leave in the comment box below. Do you have y'all have any sort of experience in your life where you could think about the person like right now and be like, like it's hard for me to even fathom the notion of forgiving you, much less forgetting. You feel what I'm saying? So that is something that is going to be my homework this week and moving forward. We did the homework last week. How did y'all do on that homework? This week's homework is find somebody that you never think that you can forgive and start the forgiving process. You it's not gonna happen in a week, sis. It's not gonna happen in a week, but it does need to happen. And I remember talking to my coworker today about it, and he was telling me, like, but do they really need to be forgiven? Like, is that really a thing? Like, not everybody needs to be forgiven. And I just think back to that that quote where it says, like, what I said earlier, is not necessarily forgiving them for them it's more so forgiving them for you because you're gonna you think by not forgiving them and like moving on and not even thinking about them you're still kind of holding on to that that pain that disappointment that frustration whatever it is even if you're not expressing it aloud you're low-key you're still holding on to it Let's let's keep it a buck. You're still holding on to it in some form or fashion. And it shows itself in different areas of your life. And you don't understand like where that is that coming from. If you take a deep look, that person that you still haven't forgiven for whatever reason is still embedded in you in some sort of capacity. So that's your homework for this week. Look at that person or that thing, even if it's yourself that you've done, that you have not forgiven, fully forgiven, didn't even think that you can forgive, try working towards forgiving. And remember, it's not for them, it's for you. It's really for you. This is all about healing you and making you a better person. I sit down and I think about that Like, I think about that, and I'm just like, I did not deserve that. Like, I did not deserve that. I didn't I didn't do any, like, I did not do anything. And a lot of kids, a lot of kids go through some traumas that open up a load of hurt and pain and bad decisions later down in their life. And people are just so easy to tell them, oh, get over it. People have been through worse. They always play that comparing game. Like, 
somebody's life is worse than yours. That is true, but we're not gonna negate what somebody goes through. You know, we're we're not gonna do that. Like that's messed up. We're not gonna do that. So just saying that aloud, like I did not deserve that. Um that situation has shaped and molded me in a negative way. I could I could be honest and say that. Not all parts of me are negative, but the parts that are negative and that could improve that situation, be it so long ago, has contributed to that tremendously. Anyways, that is this week's podcast, episode three. Forgiveness for your inner child. Forgiveness for you. Forgiveness for your inner child. Forgiven like Joseph. That's gonna be hard. That's gonna be hard. Forgiven like Joseph, boy. And God had his back every way, but he still let him go through stuff. And that'd be like the thing too. Like, why God be picking certain people to just be going through stuff like Like, back to back, like, when is it going to stop? Eventually, it stopped for Joseph, but it's just like, sheesh. You could have stepped in a long time ago, my guy. Well, you did because you let everything work out each step of the way, but still. Anyways, y'all, I love y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, a comment, and subscribe. I sound so stuffy. I can hear it. I need to blow my nose. Um. Forgiveness, y'all. Put in the comment box below who you about to forgive, why you can't do it. Is it easy for you to forgive? And remember, do your homework. Do your homework. Forgive that person one at a time. Don't do it all at once. Forgive that person who did, who played a major role in your life in a negative way. Forgive them. Let me know how it goes. And I will see you guys next week. See you later, Tiger Lilies. Thank you for watching the Dare Sis podcast. But we say bye. Say bye. Say bye, Saint. Bye. See you later, Tiger Lilies. See you later, Tiger Lilies. Crash course.